summer vacation, cowabunga, man, he's ready, it's gonna be rad, it's the Late Late Show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Late Late Show, thanks for stopping by, we're happy that you're here on tonight's show, we'll be chatting with the incredible Jason Momoa and joining us in the Blue Room. She is a Grammy Award-winning, multi-platinum-selling global superstar. She's making her Late Late Show debut right here with a residency. First time on the show, and she's going to be here all week. What a treat. The one, the only, Lord is here tonight. There she is. Hello. Hey, Lord, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very, very well. We're so thrilled that you're here on the show. This is our first show back in a while. We couldn't think of a better person to be here all week. Well, thank you for letting me uh, really take over. You know, I appreciate it. Well, you can take over as much as you want. Now, Lord, you're here all week. Is there anything you need? Is there anything we can get for you? Is there anybody you'd like to be fired? Um, I'll text you a list. You text me a list? <laughs> OK. <laughs> I already know three of them. <laughs> Mark, apologies in advance. Uh, we're so thrilled that you're here. Lord, everybody! <laughs> and look at us. Look at us back at it. <laughs> We're back. This time it's personal. We're back. Unfortunately, so is COVID. <laughs> remember that? Do you remember that? Do you remember the song we did with Ariana Grande? <laughs> We were like, everything's amazing. <laughs> and then we all went, oh, no, it's not. It's, if anything, it's more yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How was your break, Reg? What'd you get up to? Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, I uh, hung out at home a lot, and then I went to Montana. Yeah. Visited my mom. Went to uh, uh, Lake Five, uh, hang out with my friends, uh, John Thomas, Mike Benton, a bunch of other, like, kind of like a friend reunion from high school. Nice. And then I went to New York for nine days and hung out with Nina Tarr and a bunch of other cool, groovy people. It was, it was, it was like, you know, remembering what New York was like. And yeah. it was kind of New York y again. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. I yeah. love that you also full name your friends. Yeah, you got, you got to. I've got a deep respect for anyone that does that, anyone that, anyone that full names. I, I do. I felt like we were supposed to know all the people he was talking about. Like, how, how is Mike Benton? <laughs> Mike, Mike Benton is great. <laughs> um, Ian, you... I don't know if you're comfortable talking about this. You had quite the summer. Are you comfortable talking about I'm, this? I'm comfortable talking Are about it. Are you comfortable talking about I this? I got engaged! Yeah, he did! <laughs> Feels like that should be louder, doesn't it? I don't want to take away from your news, but that feels a bigger... <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Talk Thanks. us through it. Talk us through it. Talk us through... Because I... Can I... I knew about this before. I did. You, I, feel, I told you. And I felt privileged to yeah. be brought into the trust tree. I knew this was coming. I was like, we talked it through. Ice cream place, all this jazz. Talk us through it. I, I rented a car, and, or I got a car to come pick us up, and I had rented out a tiny screening room for us to watch her favorite movie, You've Got Mail. Then we went out to Republic, and we had dinner, which is where she had gotten takeaway for our first, like, get-together, like, during the pandemic. And then we went to an ice cream place in our neighborhood, and in front of the ice cream place, before we went in, I kneeled down. I said, I, oh, I have to tie my shoe which she totally nice. bought. <laughs> and then uh, when I was kneeled down, she walked back, and, like, it, I wasn't nervous the entire night until that moment, because I got a little bit drunk, and then I got so nervous, and I was like, will you marry me? Like that. And she, she said yes, and then we went in and got ice cream immediately after. <laughs> You got gauged. You got gauged. You got gauged. <laughs> I cannot tell you, buddy, we are so happy for you and for Dana. Ian and Dana, everybody, we couldn't be happy. What a summer. What a summer. Incredible. Incredible. There's only one man can top that as a catch-up summer story, and that is the one, the only Nick Bernstein. Nico, how many Malaysian podcasts were you on this summer? <laughs> I... I didn't do a second Malaysian podcast. I, I was, 
I did do other podcasts, though. And I, I was also uh, I was a guest on a talk show. The host was eight years old. <laughs> but uh, still counts. Still counts. What's the name of it? It's called The Kevin Show. <laughs> I actually, you actually can't say anything bad about it because it sounds adorable. But He I'm, also is a big fan of yours. I love Kevin. Yeah. I love anyone that's, got the, anyone that's got the basically the balls to call their show The Kevin Show. <laughs> Ellen did stand-up for like 25 years before she pulled that off. You're he, absolutely right. He's just like, I'm eight. It's the Kevin show. That's it. Done. <laughs> Is it? Have you filmed it already? Is it out? Yeah, it's out. It's uh, yeah, it's it's on his. It's on Instagram. Uh, it's it's on I think a public access channel in Boston. Okay. And also uh, simulcast in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, what's this? Are we trying to pull uh, it up? Oh, here we show. go. Hang on. Uh-oh. On the cruise. Yes. You think that's going to happen? Because in my opinion, I think that's going to be very cool. <laughs> um, do you know anyone who works at any of the cruise lines that you can put a good word in for us? No. No, I don't. <laughs> no? Oh, I love Kevin. Yes. <laughs> I love Kevin. He also had Jennifer Lawrence and former Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan on the show. He was a good one. <laughs> but they were guests two and three after Nick. Yeah, yeah, he was the lead. <laughs> yeah. I love also that Kevin brought up the topic that we're not allowed to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say to CBS Sales, we didn't talk about it through the summer. None of us mentioned it. I don't think anyone Instagrammed about it. No one said, oh, should we go on a... <laughs> the only person that publicly discussed it <laughs> is the only person who's told us we are no longer allowed to mention it on the show. <laughs> you know what I say to that? <laughs> We've also got a new, a, new, uh, we've got a new face in the old room, right here at the front, Fumi. Fumi, first show in studio. Hi. <laughs> Fumi, Hi. how are you? Are you good? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for... I was going to say thanks for having me. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> oh, God. It was so That's... nice hugging you earlier. Hi. Oh, we did. Okay. We did. We had a, we had a hug. And Because, Fumi, you joined the show. How long into the pandemic did you join? Uh, March. Beginning of March. So, beginning of March. Yeah. And you've been working on the show for about the last three or four months. Yep. But obviously you couldn't come out, and now you've moved to LA. Yes. Well, we're thrilled that you're here, Fumi, and we are. I, I will say this: you have raised the. Uh, I think you've raised the beauty of the writers' room. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a more. Wow. Go, look at. Go. All right, CC, calm down. <laughs> CC was like, "Yeah, you have." <laughs> No, I will. Listen, it was a, a low bar to cross. <laughs> Don't shake your head, Louis. He has. He's raised the handsomeness. <laughs> he's raised the handsomeness of the writer's room. Louis, Louis is just mad because he started dressing like he's in a Duran Duran video and nobody's brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I think this has been happening for us. It's been coming yeah. for a while, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you... <laughs> How long have we known each other? What, 14 years? Too long. 14 years. <laughs> 14 years we've known each other. Yeah. And I, I would argue that entire time you only wore black jeans. Yes, I was committed to the black jeans. It was a thing that you'd say. I mean, you'd say, I only want to see my legs in black jeans. Did I say that? Drunk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then suddenly you woke up one day yeah. and you were like, no. Yeah, no, I made a concerted effort to move away from the black gene. Yeah. You'll read about it in my book. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the book called? A Whiff of Scandal. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Weymouth, A Whiff of Scandal. Yeah. Well, look, that's it. It's, it's time for us. This is what they're waiting for. <laughs> this is it. 
I think we might be... I think we might wake up tomorrow to realise we were the most watched show in America last night. Because <laughs> America has been starved of news for the last seven weeks. Nobody's had any idea what's been going on for the People last two like, months. People are like, what's going on? They're like, don't know, news isn't on. <laughs> what do you mean the news isn't on? I watch CNN, they're like, no, no, no. No, real news. <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for us to get back to what we do best, our civil duty, and that's giving America, nay, the world, nay, the universe. <laughs> the news. <laughs> oh, stop! 1976. Wow. <laughs> That's what happens when you give him six weeks off. <laughs> Every single day. Just grinding, grinding down. Grinding out the news. It, That's it. It feels like we're about to report that, like, somebody in a fur coat stole <laughs> all the Bee Gees cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Steve. It was, fa it was sensational and fitting, because we've actually got... We can start with a little bit of good news. Earlier today, the FDA granted full approval to the Pfizer vaccine. It's the first coronavirus vaccine to be fully approved. Yeah. Exactly what paranoid anti-vaxxers have been waiting for. A stamp of approval by the federal government. That'll do it. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines don't need FDA approval. They spent lockdown learning to love themselves. <laughs> But, yeah, the Pfizer vaccine is now fully approved by the FDA, which sounds like a big deal until you remember that so is Mountain Dew Baja Blast. <laughs> <laughs> also has FDA approval. <laughs> approved by the FDA? Amazing! Yeah, so it's all the you can buy in a 7-Eleven. <laughs> what are you thinking? Does this mean more, more, more Americans... Is this going to change anybody's mind who hasn't got the vaccine? Do you think they'll do it now? I don't, the amount of people this is going to change their mind are, like, the same amount of people who get apples as a, at a, as a side at McDonald's. Like, it's an option, but... <laughs> it's there. You know, it's there. I, bung I bungled that joke, and am I sure it was good in the first place? I don't know. <laughs> It's the first day for everybody, you know? Yeah. yeah. It would be interesting to go through a drive-thru and just order the apple slices. <laughs> <laughs> just to see the person's face. They're like, hey, welcome to McDonald's. Go on, do you be the drive-thru? Uh, welcome to McDonald's. Uh, how may I take your order? Uh, can I just get the apples, please? The little bag of apples. <laughs> so you, you have to get a meal to order the apples as a side? I can't just get the apples on their own? We don't just... We're not legally allowed to just sell the apples. OK, can I get the apples and a bottle of water? <laughs> you know they sell apples other places. Yeah, but I... <laughs> I really... I really consider McDonald's apples to be the... <laughs> we, we never even actually see the apples. We get a box full of bags. It's not like we're cutting apples and then... Yeah, but I, I also haven't got a knife, so I need the cut apples. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> I've got a dental issue that means I can't bite into an apple, so you guys are really my perfect stop for apples. <laughs> I'm making an apple pie. <laughs> you, you know, we sell apple pies. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> in political news, here in California, the recall vote for Governor Gavin Newsom is less than a month away. And if you're a fan of Gavin Newsom, it's time to get a little nervous because, according to recent polls, there's pretty much a 50-50 chance that he gets recalled. Yeah, but that's how it goes. That's politics. You win some, you knew some. <laughs> But Gavin Newsom could end up being replaced by somebody like Caitlyn Jenner or radio host Larry Elder. I mean, come on, it's just not America, is it, if we're not having a pointlessly expensive, contentious election with a bunch of celebrities? <laughs> That's really all it's been since I moved here. I've got, like, two years of Obama, and then it's just been this... For the record, I'm against Newsom being recalled. I am, but I've got to say, there is a tiny part of me that enjoys watching someone that handsome sweat about losing their job. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And we wanted to show you this. Due to a lull in the sporting schedule on Saturday, ESPN broadcast a rerun of a race from earlier this summer. Uh, and it wasn't track and field, it wasn't horses, it was corgis having a race. Take a look. Flag is up. And Corgi's away. Jax was off to a good start on the inside. Zoe flying now. And Outlands Willow Wisp. And boy, it was a close finish. I love to picture the Queen standing at the fence. Do you know what I mean? The fistful of cash going, Come on, Mama needs a new peacoat. <laughs> that was on ESPN. So don't think we're thinking enough about, like, until we've gone straight to the court. That was on ESPN. Imagine what the, the conversation that happened for that to make the air at ESPN. <laughs> People are like, what? What do you mean we've got no sports? <laughs> Honestly, boss, there's nothing. There's no sports. Well, that's what we do. We just do sports. I know. I mean, there was like a corgi race a month ago. Get it on TV <laughs> now. <laughs> Did you see how one of the corgis just immediately turned left? and just ran into the grassy area. Have a look. Flag is up, and Corgi's away. <laughs> Jax was off to a good start on the inside. Even the Corgi's like, this is stupid, guys. I am... I'm not doing... You know, what they, you know what they need, though? Jockeys. <laughs> you need jockeys, little monkey jockeys. <laughs> just put a little... When, yeah, put a little, put a little monkey on the back there. Not like a big monkey, you know, like the one in Friends. Marcel. Every, every corgi has a little monkey on his back, but they're dressed as a jockey. <laughs> I actually think that would be amazing. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. That, first one back. Bumpy landing, but I think we brought in... <laughs> the news.